Let's use some stencils and our jelly plates to decorate our paper bags to use in junk journals. Welcome, it's Barbara from Vienna, Austria. So a little over two weeks ago, my friend Luisa Heinzel posted two videos named Things to Throw on Paper Bags. If you miss those, you can find them linked below this video. It was very entertaining, as always, <laughs> to watch Louisa experiment with various mediums and, as expected, she achieved stunning results. Louisa mentioned in her video that she needs those paper bags for our upcoming Defemember series, which is a December daily series we are hosting again together from December 1st to the 25th, making fun ephemera for our own junk journals. And now it's my turn to decorate my paper bags. We cannot tell you yet what we are using these paper bags for. And if you're wondering if you need them to participate in Defemember, I can assure you, you do not. However, these paper bags are super fun to use in any junk journal. So I hope you will join us and have fun with your own. So I have 25 paper bags. I have my jelly plate. And of course, we need stencils. As you can imagine, when you have a YouTube channel, you get offers for collaborations and sponsorships. So far, I have turned down almost every single one because it was never the right fit. I am super picky about who I collaborate with and would only ever agree to a sponsorship when I'm convinced of the product and would buy it with my own money. So I'm thrilled to introduce to you PM Artist Studio from Texas, USA. So the P in PM Artist Studio stands for Patricia, the M stands for Mariah, and together they also have a fun YouTube channel with lots of tutorials and tips, not only on how to use the stencils, but also jelly plate printing and other fun techniques. So Mariah contacted me asking if she could send me some stencils to review on my channel. And since I'm an absolute stencil junkie <laughs> and I fell in love with their stencil designs immediately, I happily agreed. I also wanted to make sure that you would receive a discount when you order from their website. So you get 10% off orders over $30 using this code. And I will write that code for you in the description box as well. And in addition, there's free shipping in the US for orders over $30 and international orders over $125. I will also link their YouTube channel below. And I also think they have a website, www.pmartiststudio.com, which I will also link for you below. This is the packaging that the stencils came in and there's a note saying each order is packaged like this. We use as much recyclable packaging as possible. Yay for that, love that. And this can definitely be used in junk journals. Love this glassine material. Then I got this beautiful card. I would say that's done using jelly plates. Really, really beautiful. And it says, Barbara, thank you for taking the opportunity to try our stencils. We are so excited to see the beautiful pieces you create with them. Fingers crossed. <laughs> Cheers. We are so happy to call you our arty friend. Hugs, Patricia and Mariah. So here's a note saying all orders include a card, a packet and a freebie stencil strip. So we saw the card. And oh, there's another card here. I'm not sure what the packet is. Maybe this is the packet. I don't know. But this is the free stencil strip, for example. Super cute. Let's see what this is. Oh, these are so cool. So these are like collage fodder that I can definitely use in some collages or some other projects. Love it. Thank you so much, Mariah and Patricia. So let me show you all the stencils. Let me put this cardboard underneath so you can see the designs better. So these, I don't remember ordering. So I think these kind of were bonus stencils. So thank you again so much. This one is so cool and delicate. And this is basically the bigger version of this one here. So a lot of the stencils, I'm not sure if all of them, but a lot of them you can get in various sizes. So that's really cool as well. So here we have a pack of butterflies. 
And these are all the butterflies that are in that set. Absolutely gorgeous. Obviously, I had to try the dragonflies. So this is a set of 11. Look at these. I cannot wait to try these ones especially. How cool are they? Then we have dragonfly wing stained glass stencil, 5 by 7 inches. So again, I think this was available in various sizes. And we have a Blooms stencil, also 5 by 7 Then we have some moths. I love this. Death's Head Hawk Moth. How cool is this? And that also came with this here, which you can also definitely use, especially for jelly plate printing. I think this would be fun. Another really cool name, A Merger of Ravens and Crows. <laughs> These are the small versions. And they also came with this here. Next, we have Cascading Cogs. Then we have a Semic Writing, 9 by 12 inches. Look how gorgeous this is. Then there's a little bag with it that says a semic bits we will send when we can and if asked in the special instructions. So these are the insides of that stencil. How cool to use these on a jelly plate or with a spray or something. Love it. Then we have one that's called Rusty Rivets, 8 by 10 very fun as well then there's one that is super challenging to pronounce <laughs> let's see if i can do this aqueous effervescence i hope that's right <laughs> anyway it's a super fun pattern then we have the same stencil i'm not going to pronounce it again as a small pattern so that looks like this so again in comparison we have the large version and the small version. Both are really beautiful. And then there's a note here saying the following are other bits we send and especially if requested in the special instructions. Many like to see them to create Franken stencils. Patricia does and they have turned into stencils we sell in the shop. So those are basically again the outer parts of the stencils or masks. That one, and then we have the dragonflies. So let's see what we can do with these fun stencils and our jelly plate. I'm nervous and excited. So the first technique I want to try is one that I've seen by Karen Burchill. Her YouTube channel is called Karen Burchill Mixed Media Creations. I will link the video that I watched for you below. So we're going to start off with black. I have some packaging paper next to me where I can roll off my brayer. Then we add our first stencil. So this is the dragonfly wing stained glass one. Super cool. Then we take a paper and take off the paint that's in all of these negative areas. I'm just going to again use packaging paper. And depending on the look you want, you do it more intense or not. The less intense you do it, so the less precise you get the paint off, the more grungy apparently the print will look. I have not tried this at all, so this is my first try. Oh, how cool does this look? Wow. Okay, then we leave the stencil on and we add some other colors. So let's add this one. This is Yellow Ochre by Amsterdam. And I'm taking another brayer for this because I don't want to mix the black with the other color. And then let's add some Jade Green. Now we can peel the stencil off. Oh wow, this looks so amazing already. And now we need to let this dry. That's the hardest part, the waiting. 
I did help it along a little bit with my heat gun and now it's dry to the touch. And then I'm going to add some buff titanium on top, cover the whole plate. And this layer needs to be so thin that we see the design through the paint layer. And then I'm going to put my, the front of my bag on top of that. Let's have a look. Ooh. Oh, wow. <gasps> this looks amazing. Wow. Check it out. I'm in love. I love this technique of the black first and then you add a light color last and then you get this really cool grungy effect. How amazing is this? I am so in love. Wow. Okay, I want to try that same technique again. This time I'll use this stencil, which I think was called Bloom. So again, you add your black. That might have been too much, although apparently it's better if that's not quite so thin. Otherwise, apparently it lifts off quite easily. I mean, otherwise it lifts off with the stencil instead of with the paper. And then we add the stencil. And then we take the paper and go over it to get all of the negative space so that the black comes off in those areas so cute looks like there's still a lot of black on here but we're just going to keep going and try this should we use some different colors let's try this cerulean blue deep by golden Karen Burchill actually puts her paint on, I think, a second jelly plate. And then she takes it with a brayer and then puts it on like this. But I thought I'd try just putting it on directly. And then we'll add some of my jade green. Let's take this off. Oh, wow. It looks amazing already. We need to dry this again. Once that's dry to the touch, I'm going to add my buff titanium. Again, making sure it's a thin layer so that we can just see the design underneath. And let's take the next paper bag. And just for your information, I'm rubbing a lot longer than I'm showing you here on the video because that would be totally boring. Okay, that's very dark but very cool that's perfect for winter isn't it looks almost like some snow flowers or frost flowers i also want to try the same technique with this stencil because this one has a lot of negative space so i think this one should look super cool this one did not have as much negative space so that's why we have a lot of black on the print but this one should look a lot different Again, amazing result. I'm going to add the yellow ochre again. And then some cerulean blue deep. Okay, let's take this off. Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Again, it's dry to the touch. Adding the buff titanium. So that's a nice thin layer. And let's see what it will look like. Love it. I don't know why this here didn't come off. But all in all, it's still gorgeous. Let's see in comparison if we use this one here, which is the bigger version of that same unpronounceable pattern. <laughs> oh, will you look at that? Oh, I'm so in love with these. 
This time I'm going to try this cedar color. And if you're wondering where these paints are from, they are from Action, which is a Dutch chain we have in Europe. This color has not been available for a really long time. This one I think should be available. Never tried this one before. More on the liquidy side. Yeah, very liquid. This is probably not a great option for a jelly plate. And then I'm going to add some titanium white. Why not add a touch of my beloved shade green? That should look nice and wintry. Not a lot of color variation there. I'm super curious to see what that will look like once we pull the print. So let's dry it. And as my last layer, I'm going to try my yellow ochre. I cannot tell you how much I love this print. <laughs> Even with the, with the problems here, I, I might have to clean this part here. But I mean, no, I can't because this is so much yumminess here. And it looks so amazing. I'm so happy I used the yellow there. Super fun. Next, I want to try these cool gears. I think I'm going to keep starting off with black because I just love the contrast. Wow. I'll try some raw umber. And then I'll add some phthalo turquoise. Interesting. Once again, I'm going to add my yellow ochre as a background color. And I was sure to clean my brayer in between because I don't want this turning green. This is very interesting looking. <laughs> there is definitely green here. Not what I wanted, but there are some very cool looking parts here. Very grungy. It's probably my least favorite so far. And I'm going to clean this part off here with a baby wipe because that part seems to be stuck. Next, I want to try these butterflies. Oh, let's put them facing each other. <sighs> Shall we try some fluorescent orange to switch it up a bit? And some yellow ochre. That already looks stunning, doesn't it? Let's dry it. And we can get another print by just putting these on an extra piece of paper while the paint is still wet. It won't be as perfect, but it's still usable, I'd say. And then I'll add some buff titanium as our last layer. I don't know what's different, but some of this paint is just not coming off. It still looks super cool though. They look like monarch butterflies, don't they? Love it. I think I need to clean this off again because there's even some paper bag here that came off. Let's try some dragonflies. I think this is the biggest one. And then we can do a partial one here and a partial one there. Oh wow, this might look spectacular. I hope so. Yeah, unfortunately, these intricate holes, they're very hard to get the paint out of. This still looks pretty cool. Let's add some cerulean blue. Mm. 
Then I'll dry that first and then I'll add my ochre yellow and that should prevent this from becoming green as long as my brayer doesn't have any blue wet color on it. Ah, we managed to get some yellow through the wings. Oh, that looks amazing. And then I'll try some jade green on top of that. And we can even see the intricate pattern of the wings. I don't know why some of the paper bag is tearing off. It really helped to dry the blue before adding the yellow because they did not mix. So that's definitely the way to go. Yep, still looks super interesting. I'm going to turn my jelly plate around. Maybe this side works better. Let's try these moths. I'll add some phthalo turquoise. Wow, that's a strong color. Oh no, it came off. I'm going to dry that. Then I'll add some titanium white. And once it's dry, some yellow ochre. <gasps> this is looking amazing. Oh, wow. The yellow behind the black here with the blue in between is wow. Okay, this is definitely one of my favorites. So cool. Next, I want to try this cool one. And since again, it has a lot of solid parts here, like we had with this bloom stencil, I want to try it in reverse. So I want the lighter color first. So I'm going to start off with titanium white. Then let's add some cerulean blue. Let's try that. And then I'm adding some fluorescent orange. <laughs> that looks funny. Let's try it. And for the last layer, I'm going to add my yellow ochre. Also interesting, totally different. This time I want to start out with my yellow ochre. And I want to try this fun one. I think this one was called Rusty, what was it? Rusty something. Rusty Rivets was the name. <laughs> How cute is that? Let's add some jade green. And some cerulean blue. This time I'm not drying it in between because I do actually want these colors to mix a little bit. And then I'm adding black on top. No idea how that's going to look. Either really good or really bad. <laughs> I just have to make sure the layer is as thin as possible and I have to be fast before it dries. So I'm really rubbing a lot off camera, yeah? Please don't think that I'm just going over it once or twice and then pulling it off. And always check on a corner. If you see that it's coming off nicely, then you can take it off. Otherwise, you have to keep rubbing. 
So the black behind the yellow really changed the yellow to be this really dark, grungy color. Would have looked completely different if I would have put a light color behind that yellow. Then we have this one, which is from the A Murder of Ravens and Crows set. This time I'm not going to put any paint down first. And I'm going to use some of these cool symbols. And I'll add some of the yellow ochre. Then I'll take some bubble wrap to get some more pattern into the solid yellow. And then I'll add some jade green. And as my last layer, I'm going to try this deep blue sea from Anita's All Purpose Acrylics. I hope this is still good. Looks okay. It's okay. It looks a bit flat somehow, doesn't it? It's missing a dimension. I'm starting off with the black again and I'm using this huge butterfly. Beautiful. Then I'm going to do my fluorescent orange again. I think that works really well with the butterfly. I'll dry that and I'll add some of the fallow turquoise. And the yellow ochre for the last layer. It's not great, but it's not bad. <laughs> this is wallpaper. Titanium white. If it's not too dry, I'm going to try to get some of this on here. I don't know why I'm doing this with my fingers. I should have just put a paper over it. What am I doing? That has huge potential. I'm going to dry this and then I'll add titanium white. No, buff titanium. Okay, the bird isn't super visible. You see him here in the beak, tail, legs. But I still think the print looks pretty cool. So that was 13 paper bags. I have 12 more to go. I will do those off camera and then show you the results at the end. So it's the next day. I finished off all my 25 bags yesterday and today. The jelly printing alone took about maybe six hours and then adding splatters and doing the back sides today took maybe another three or four hours. <laughs> So it is definitely a full day project, <laughs> but it was loads of fun. I really enjoyed it. So let me show you the results. So these are the back sides. I just kind of more or less wildly splattered them. I first sprayed coffee onto the bag. Then I added some splatters approximately on half of them with purple, half of them with turquoise. Then I added some instant coffee granulate into the puddles, as well as fine-grained salt, and finally some bronze splattering. 
And what I did at the end was because I realized that, especially where the coffee granulates were, that the paper bags stuck to each other. I rubbed all of my back sides of the bags with a piece of a white candle because I know if I put them in journals and they stick like that, they are going to tear my pages. And that's definitely something I wanted to avoid. So all the backs are very similar. Similar yet different, of course. I really like how they turned out. They have a lot of interest on each of them. Oh, obviously I added some black splatters then as well. So I think they have quite a lot of depth to them because of the variety of values in the colors. Yeah, so I don't think I have to show you all of them. They are all very, very similar. So now let me show you all of the finished fronts. So some of these you will recognize from what we did together, but some of them obviously I've done off camera. I did add splattering to all of them and I added numbers. So one through 25. So on this one, I just added some bronze splatters. On this one, I added the same stencil that's on here and I added white paint over the flowers because I had a feeling they weren't coming out enough. And then I added some white and brass splatters on top. On this one, I stenciled this black bird on top, added some splatters. This one just has a few white splatters, otherwise I left it as it was. This is a new one, obviously. I have some round jelly plates. So this is one, this is four inch. Sorry about the glare. And then I have this even smaller one. I don't know the size of this one, but you see it is a lot smaller than the other one. So that's how I made these. And these of course took a lot longer because it's not just one print, but several prints. But I do like the way that this turned out. And here again, I added a stenciled dragonfly just with black acrylic paint and then splattering. To this one, again, I wanted to add some more contrast. So I stenciled this bird here in black over it and then added the splattering. To this one, I just added the strip of the moon phases and splattering. To this one, I added obviously this uh, very cool moth first by stenciling through with white paint and then I also put black paint on the stencil itself and then printed it over the moth. Really like how that turned out. On this one I just added white splatters. I think this is the only one that doesn't have a focal point. I can always add one at a later point if I want to. On this one, I also added first the silhouette of the bird with black paint. And then I added that ochre yellow paint through the detailed stencil. And of course, then the white splatters. Here I just added splatters. Here again, I used the round jelly plates. This one again, I stenciled on afterwards. Here I just added white splatters, just some splatters on this one, love this one. Here again I stenciled the silhouette of the dragonfly and some splatters. More dragonfly stenciling on top of that with splatters. Ah, this is another one where I didn't have a focal point, but I don't really think this one needs a focal point. I love this the way it is. More of the round stenciling. These came out quite well here, I think. I'm very happy with this one. Here I stenciled the detailed moth with black paint. Not super happy with this because the contrast isn't enough. I should have done this in white. Love this one. Just added a few white splatters to this. Here I added some black moths. This one I'm not super happy with either, probably because of the colors. Here I just stenciled the bird, added some splatters. 
And I put the bird on one side rather than putting him in the middle because I thought if I put this in a journal, then I could maybe put it in like this and you would see the bird on one side and this side still has room for some other decoration. And this one just got some splatters. Really happy with how this turned out. And finally, there's our butterflies that we did together for the 25th. So I'm super happy with these. It was a lot of work, <laughs> but I think it's totally worth it. Maybe you want to give it a try. Decorate some paper bags for your journals. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah. <laughs>